Well, good afternoon. Welcome to this session on Google Vault. My name is John Sowash, and uh, I'm going to take you through a little overview and exploration of this relatively new tool for Google Apps districts called Google Vault. Um, I'm a, a neighbor from up the road, a couple states over, that is. Um, I'm from Michigan. Uh, I was a high school science teacher uh, in Michigan for a few years, and I was a high school principal for a couple of years. Um, I actually ran an entire online school um, that was pretty much built on Google Apps for Education and gave me a lot of experience, uh, both from the classroom side as well as the administrative side. I was the IT director and <laughs> everything uh, for the school. And uh, um, now I'm currently just an independent tech consultant. Um, I work with a variety of uh, schools um, around the country and uh, in the world, um, doing a setup, um, device deployment uh, recommendations, and then a lot of teacher training, professional uh, development stuff uh, as well. Thrilled to be here in Indiana um, and uh, working with you and uh, um, exploring Google Vault, um, which is a, a topic that is uh, not necessarily fun, as I mentioned earlier, but very important. Uh, you know, Google Vault is an e-discovery archiving tool that um, you hope you never need. Because if you do need it, it means you have been sued. Um, there's been a student incident, um, uh, a staff incident, some impropriety, impropriety or something bad happened. Um, if that does happen, you really want to make sure that Google Vault is available and provides you access to the data that can help you resolve and you know, follow the trail of that incident. So today we're going to be looking at how to set up Vault today so that in one, three, five, ten years, if an incident does arise, you can go back into the archives and find the data that you need. And then we'll also take a look at how you would actually do that if uh, an incident does um, arise and, uh, and appear. So uh, again, uh, my resources are available. Um, I'm going to go through some slides today. They are on the website that I had up earlier, but honestly, I wouldn't spend any time on the slides right now. I'll make sure you get a copy of them. Um, if you have access to your Google Apps dashboard, I would recommend that you log into the dashboard and kind of poke along and follow as I go. Now, you may or may not want to actually make any changes at this moment, but at least be familiar with where those options are and start thinking about how you want to configure your domain, your district's um, data. Um, you know, a couple of issues, I mean, I've already kind of uh, mentioned them, you know, real briefly um, that are going to impact, potentially, um, some of you and uh, your, your domains. Um, how would you respond to uh, some of these issues um, right here? So first of all, um, what happens if you get a FOIA request? Um, you know, it probably has happened to your school at some point. It, it's a legally binding request. Someone wants to know something, whether it's a reporter who's doing research on something. Um, I have no idea what the FOIA request is. Uh, neither can you. Um, I just learned uh, today, a gentleman shared with me, that you have vendors who are request, uh, submitting FOIA requests to see who your suppliers are so that they can poach those contracts. A new uh, aspect of FOIA that I had not previously uh, considered and thought of. But uh, it's happened, um, evidently. Um, another one that uh, hopefully won't, uh, won't happen but is sadly becoming more prevalent, uh, cyberbullying. Um, we are, because we have Google and because it's free to use and there's no storage limit, the amount of data that your school is creating, your students are creating, is just incredible and will only increase. That data has bad things in it that you should know about or you need the ability to discover to prevent some very serious issues. You know, every school year there are numerous reports of uh, students who um, commit suicide or self-harm because of incidents that get traced back to some form of bullying, whether it's, you know, physical or cyber or whatnot. Wouldn't it be great if we had a way to monitor that before it becomes an issue? Um, I believe Securely is here today. They're a filtering solution. I do not work for Securely. They do not even know who I am. 
but they have an unbelievable tool that fits right along with uh, cyberbullying and helps discover a lot of that content even before it would get into Vault. So check them out and uh, talk to them. Definitely something uh, worth um, worth considering. Um, another, you know, sad one: uh, staff impropriety. I mean. And even when I was teaching, we had a uh, teacher that was um, suddenly dismissed because of uh, impropriety with students. Um, it's a horrible thing, but it happens. And if it does happen, you're going to need a lot of documentation because everybody's going to start suing everybody. And um, you, need, you need a paper trail. These are some potential scenarios I hope you never have to deal with. But if you do, I want you to be prepared. And that's why we're here to talk about uh, Vault today. So. Um, the good news is that as of January, Google Vault is free for any Google Apps for Education customer. So previously, uh, Google Vault is actually uh, was a company called Postini that Google purchased. And I don't, it was quite a while ago. And slowly, they have been taking Postini and developing it and directly embedding it into the Google Apps suite. So I have no, at least one customer here, Postini customer, now Vault customer. You've been with Postini how long? You said long time, long Se time. several years. Yeah. Yep. Um, anybody else, previous Postini or previous paid Vault user? And now, hey, you got extra money. Um, so you don't have to pay for it. I forget how much it was, a couple bucks a person, I think, per year. Um, it wasn't overly expensive, but it was money, which schools don't have a lot of. And so that's freed up for other things. So everybody has Vault. I expect that many of you are here because sometime in January, you logged into your admin console and you were pre presented with this warning message that said, congratulations, you now have Vault. And by the way, you need to accept these new terms of services and make sure you turn Hangouts off or something like that. Um, and you're like, I don't even know what this is. We're going to walk through it, set it up, make sure it is configured correctly so that you can get the advantage of this really great and very helpful tool. So we, you know, we've already gone through uh, some of this. You know, there's many reasons to use Vault. You know, there's lots of federal rules and regulations. Freedom of Information Act is a federal law, which has many state uh, versions of it as well. Um, as if you're in a public school, um, every state has rules regarding um, uh, data retention, how long you have to keep documentation, especially email, in case there is an inquiry of some sort. Um, and then just, you know, as educators, <laughs> it's always good to have a paper trail. I mean, as a former teacher, it's always good to kid says, hey, I didn't get it. And you say, well, here's my copy of it. You did get it. I handed it to you. So it's always good to have a paper trail. And Vault will, uh, will assist you with that. Um, Vault has, um, you know, three uh, basic tools and purposes behind it, um, certainly archiving. Um, the whole idea behind archiving is you don't know what you need until you need it. So basically, you have to archive everything because you don't know what might be helpful in the future. So Google Vault is going to be just a catch-all for all data in your domain. Now, when I say all data, I'm going to talk about what that actually means. It's, there are specific tools that it does archive. So once you turn Vault on, it's just going to collect all of the data, specifically email and chat, that flows in and out of your domain. There is no storage limit with Vault, literally. It doesn't matter how much it is or what it is, it's going to catch it. And um, Vault is capable of storing that data forever. There is no limit on it. You can specify the limit, but it will keep it forever if that's what you decide. Um, so the, and the next thing is retention. Um, if someone suspects that they're going to be accused of wrongdoing and they have actually done it, the first thing that they would do is destroy any incriminating evidence. Vault has the capability of um, blocking their ability to destroy that evidence, that digital evidence. We'll talk about holds and, and search, things like that. The third piece of Vault is, okay, we've collected this data. We've prevented it from being destroyed. How do we find it? And so Vault has the capability of searching through the terabytes of data that is collected and then helping you pull out the reports and the downloads and the data that someone requests or that you need to, uh, to find. Um, some things that we'll talk about today, um, uh, email and chat archiving are going to be the, the primary purpose behind Vault. Um, we'll talk about legal holds. Um, 
Google Drive is slowly being integrated into Vault. It is not a full implementation right now, but I expect that will be coming. Um, and then we'll talk about searching and exporting that data and providing it to whomever is requesting it. Um, here is uh, what Vault currently supports. So uh, it was designed, Postini, the original product, was designed for email archiving. And the majority of the legal requirements related to data retention relates to email specifically. And so Vault is fully integrated and fully supports uh, Gmail within your Google Apps organization. The uh, recent announcement as of yesterday, I believe, is that Hangouts is now fully supported by Vault as well. And originally in January, you were presented with that message because Google Talk was supported, but Hangouts was not. And so they told you if you want to use Vault, you should turn off Hangouts and go back to Talk. Well, now both products, Hangouts and Talk, are supported. So if you're using the chat function of Gmail, it does work um, and it does archive those. Um, there are a couple of um, caveats to that related to off the record chats and things like that, but um, it is fully implemented. Um, Google Drive is uh, partially implemented, um, so you cannot, uh, uh, Vault does not retain Google Drive documents. So it allows you to search existing documents, but you cannot prevent a user from deleting them. It's not going to capture those and store them indefinitely either. So it's mostly just what's in that, that person's Drive account and searching for terms, uh, uh, phrases, things like that. Again, I expect that will increase over time, but most legal requirements don't specify digital documents because that's just a huge, I mean, that's a problem. You've got people using Word and you know, Office and iWork and Drive and OpenOffice and who knows what. And so that's just a huge matter to, uh, to deal with. Um, four steps to uh, enable Vault for your domain. And uh, we'll go over these, and I'll show you how to do them. Pretty simple to set it up. Uh, first of all, you need to turn it on. And so this is done just like any other Google Apps service. You need to log into your Google Apps console. You go to the Apps section, and then click on the Google Apps, and find Vault in the list. It should be down near the bottom. Um, you need to turn on Vault for your domain. Now, this is a little confusing. Um, uh, turning Vault on does not necessarily, um, it doesn't deal with the archiving piece. Basically, what turning Vault does is it specifies who can actually access the Vault controls. So um, you don't want your students to have Vault on because there is no reason that a student should be going to Vault and doing data searches and pulling information out. So I recommend that you turn Vault on. You should have an organizational unit within your domain that's admin or Vault users or something. And you turn it on for that OU. And those are the people who are responsible for managing Vault and complying with the, F the FOIA requests, things like that. If Vault is off for an OU, it does not impact the retention of messages. It just impacts if they can actually access the Vault service. Um, We'll go into that a little bit more. So again, here it is. Um, you know, within Vault, make sure it's on. And then I recommend you have some kind of a OU for your IT, your admins. Um, you can put people in there, move them out as you need to. Once you have the Vault service turned on for somebody, that person or that group can then go in and actually configure Vault to begin retaining the data within your domain, which is what we'll, uh, we'll do next. Um, now, Vault does have some user roles. and This isn't something you're going to want to do right now, but over time, as you kind of figure out who's responsible for what, um, if you're familiar with the, the user role um, feature of Google Apps, the console, um, you can actually specify and give someone access to various controls of Vault so that they can you know, create reports or view existing matters or edit existing matters, things like that, not give them full access uh, to the whole thing. So for, you know, perhaps if a matter comes in, you assign it to an administrator who's responsible for overseeing it. You can make sure that they have access to just the matters on their caseload, not all matters from within the district um, as a whole. Um, again, that's something you'll want to deal with down the road if it makes sense. Or you can just handle it within your IT department. Keep it small. You don't want a lot of people in vault. The fewer, the better. Um, but uh, uh, different roles are, are possible. 
Here's a um, quick look. So you've got here are your various um, capabilities. You can select all or none of these roles. Again, this is within the, uh, um, the role section of your admin console. So you can create uh, vault specific um, roles. So accessing Google Vault is not accomplished through the admin console. That's not where you do it. You actually, once you have it turned on, need to go to ediscovery.google.com. This is the actual Vault console where the data is available to you. You can search through it and all your matters will be listed and things like that. If someone tries to go to ediscovery.google.com and Vault is not turned on for their account, it won't work. So this is why you have to turn it on first for your IT group and then go here and it'll let you in. But if your admin, your superintendent, he's not an IT person, he tries to go here, unless you've enabled it for him, her, it won't let them in either. Students don't need it, teachers don't need it, just people who need to deal with the data that's being collected by Vault. Once you are in Vault, the first thing that you will do, if you have not done so already, is to set up your retention policy for your organization. This is how you're dealing with the data in your domain. And should be right up at the top. It'll say uh, retention policy or modify retention policy. And there's three, three options that you can select from. Um, no policy, which if you haven't set it up is what it's going to be. Um, or indefinite. So it is just going to collect data till the end of time or until the internet collapses. Um, whichever happens first. No size limit, it's all going to be there. The third option is the retained data for a specified number of days. Now, I was told that the um, retention policy for the state of Indiana is seven years. So you would have to make a choice. Do I want to retain data for seven years? Do I want to do indefinitely? Are there any lawyers in here? Do we have any lawyers? I am not a lawyer. I cannot advise you. Um, my thinking, at first I was like, oh, we'll just keep it forever. You know, you never know what you might need. Keep in mind that the, if you set it forever, um, you are going to collect a lot of data. And that data is just going to keep growing and growing, which is going to make finding what you want more difficult because you have more data to sift through. Check with your legal counsel with the, the rulings, but you're only legally obligated to hold it for seven years. You just say, I have seven years worth of data. You can have anything you want in that seven year period of time. Have at it. Might be an easier option to, to deal with. Now, keep in mind, this is a floating date. It is not seven years from today. It is seven or however many days you set from the moment that piece of information is created. In seven years, if I send an email, that email is kept for seven years. So the data is kind of kind of shift and, and grow over time, um, kind of that sliding window. Any questions about uh, retention period? Anything like that? Yes, sir. As I understand it, the reason we want it definite is, let's say we set it for seven years, and superintendent or administrator has something that they decide to save in a folder or inbox. That seven years is up. It'll even pull it out of there. Um, I believe you are correct. Um, I'd have to look in there, uh, but yes, I believe I, I, re I was looking through this. You definitely want to read through this documentation. It's lengthy, and you've got to be very focused when you read it because it's very technical. Um, but yes, I believe that is true. It's, it, it purges that data after that period of time, again, seven years or whatever you set from the moment that it was, it was received. Yeah, you've got to talk to your, your admins, your lawyers, and, and decide um, what the best option is. For today, if I were you, I would go ahead and you know, put it indefinitely for the moment, have those discussions, and then switch it whenever, uh, whenever you make a choice about that. Um, anybody have a different uh, setup? Uh, what have you chosen? Set period of time? Bob, you were told me about the seven-year period. Are you indefinite or indefinite? indefinite? Okay. 
Seven. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, yes. Thank you for yes. Uh, it includes the leap years. Hopefully, right? Two. <laughs> so yeah, you gotta, you gotta do a little math there. Three sixty-five times how many years uh, that you want. Um, so the first thing you have to do is set up your retention policy. And that's just going to be enacted, just going to keep going and going as you've specified. Once your retention policy is set, a issue will arise. And you will be requested to go into Vault and retrieve information and data. And this is the procedure that you will need to follow. Um, the terminology is very important. It took me a while to understand the terms that are used. Once you have the terms down, it makes a lot more sense. The first term you need to understand is a matter. A matter is, I guess, the actual legal term that is used to describe a FOIA request or you know, a, an internal investigation, anything. It's, it's a matter. And so in Vault, you will see an option at the top level that says Create New Matter. Basically, think of a matter as a folder. That's all it is. It's just the container into which you're pulling out the data that you want. So you'll have to come up with some kind of a naming convention, depending on the size of your district, because over time you may have a lot of matters in there, whether it's a case number, something, but assign some, uh, some naming convention to it so it's easy for people to find. You create that matter. And then you, you wait for instructions about, okay, what kind of information do I need to put into this matter? It's just an empty container, an empty folder uh, right now. So the next step is to create a hold. Like I mentioned earlier, if this is uh, something that is actively you know, happening in real time, if it were me and I was being accused of something and I was guilty, I would try to destroy evidence. So what you want to do is you want to place a hold on that account or your domain. Keep in mind that you have a retention policy. That retention policy, let's say that it's seven years. Well, let's say that you get a FOIA request that asks for information from the last seven years. You have to remember that every single day, every 24-hour period of time, 24 hours of data is purged from Vault because it's saying, hey, you have a seven-year period of time. Oh, that's after seven years. Goodbye. Well, once that FOIA request comes in, they set the date time. You can't lose data within that date range that they've given you. So a hold overrides your district's, your domain's retention policy until the hold is released. Now, you can set holds for individual users or for your entire domain. So a FOIA request comes in and it's for, I need all emails from the superintendent from this period to this period, then you just set the hold on their account. No data will be lost for that superintendent's email. If it's, I need all documents from your domain or all emails from your domain with this topic, then you set your, your hold for the domain so that you don't lose data during the inquiry period, which you know how legal proceedings are. It could take months or even years for the legal proceeding to actually be released and, and concluded. So the hold is very important to make sure you're not losing data as that proceeding is, is going on. So first you create your matter and then you create your hold as appropriate depending on the type of issues. And I'll give you some scenarios at the end um, that will uh, uh, make it a little bit clearer. Um, it is important to note that um, Google Drive is not hold compatible. Okay, so Drive does not, it doesn't archive the data. You're basically just looking live at the Drive account at that time. So if someone deletes Drive documents, they won't be included in, in, the, uh, in the hold. And that's what Vault is. Most requests are email specific, not document data specific. The next step, depending on what is requested, is to um, parse through the information within your Vault account to find the data that is requested. It might be for a specific person, specific date range, specific topic, etc. Um, you choose uh, whatever you want. 
There is a search function in Vault. I'll show you that live in a, in a moment. And uh, you can search through all of it. And it'll develop, say, here's what we found. And then you can export that data as needed. When you search, it will search mail, chat, and drive. And then we'll allow you to export that data as necessary in a variety of formats. You then would deliver that you know, zipped file to the lawyers that are requesting it, or the reporters, or whomever um, has uh, issued the request. So again, just to recap, when something happens, create a matter, create a hold, do the search for the data that's being requested, and then ultimately you'll deliver that data in whatever format that it is to the council that is, uh, that is requesting it. And then it's up to them to sift through the terabytes or megabytes of data that have been uh, developed and created. Um, so let me go through a, a vault in real life, um, a little scenario. Um, these are very simple. So I'm going to be live in my uh, Drive uh, or Google Apps domain. I'm a one-person organization, so I've created a bunch of fictional student accounts and created a bunch of you know, fictional situation. So it's very simple if only life would be this easy. Uh, but it, it will demonstrate you know, what uh, Vault can, uh, can do for you. So first we'll go to ediscovery.google.com and sign in with my apps account. Okay. So this is um, Vault. So again, what I mentioned earlier, uh, first you have to turn it on, have access to this page. You want to make sure you modify your retention period. I've got mine set for indefinite at the moment. And uh, let's uh, go in here. So um, a, uh, administ uh, a, uh, uh, my school has a uh, uh, policy where they have a, an anonymous form where students can report uh, cyberbullying. They're aware of something that's happening. They notified the, uh, the administration. So I receive an email from the administration saying that um, a student uh, whose uh, name is Eustace, poor kid, um, has been bullying or uh, reportedly is bullying another student in uh, his grade called Polly. And so my administrator would like me to uh, research this to see if this is actually true. Um, and then he would act on it if it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new matter. So I'm going to say bullying report Eustace. You know, you could uh, request it by administrator, put as, much, put as much detail in there as you can, because again, if you're a large district, you may have hundreds or thousands of matters over time. So you want to make sure it's very clear that you're using the right one. So I'll create new matter. Um, and now that I am in this matter, I'm going to go ahead and create a hold. So, um, the incident, uh, supposedly, Eustace has been um, accused of sending threatening messages to Polly. We're Google Apps School, everybody's using Gmail and all the tools, and so I don't need to place a hold on the entire domain, I just need to hold those two accounts. So, I'm going to say student... So let's call this email hold. And I'll just enter their name. So Eustace and Polly. Um, if there's a specific date range that we're you know, reporting on, we can, we can do that. Um, you can uh, do the whole entire account or just specific terms if you want. So I want all emails with the word, you know, whatever in it. And you go from there. Um, just worth pointing out that, you know, even before I put the hold on, if Eustace goes in and deletes messages, it doesn't matter. Because Vault has already collected those messages. A user deleting a message from their account does not impact the Vault archive. The hold is simply making sure that Vault doesn't purge on schedule the data based on the retention policy that you've set. In this instance, probably wouldn't be a big deal because who's going to report a bullying incident from seven years ago? And if they did, I probably wouldn't be investigating it. All right, so now we have our hold. We're good there. And so now we're going to go in and begin searching. 
So again, I'm within this matter. So all of the, everything I'm doing is related to this specific incident. The hold is related to that, and then the search is going to be related to that as well. So here's our search panel. Again, you've got all data, hold data, and unprocessed. Um, and then you have your mail and your drive. So you can search those independently. And then you can do just individual account search, organization search, etc. So as someone who's potentially looking at this data, you, um, sadly, scarily, you are kind of assuming the role of the NSA. Got to be a little bit careful here. If you only are looking for information related to use this in poly, you really don't want to do a whole account or organization search because that might make you aware of some things that you really don't want to be aware of because it's going to pull data from everyone's account. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to um, the account area. I'm going to say Eustis and Polly. I'm going to search their mail data first. And you know, I can just I can do a blank search if I want and pull it out. Now, depending on how much stuff is in there, this could take a very long time. I mean, it, it could like go make a pot of coffee and come back kind of time. There's not that much data in here. So right now I am seeing every email from uh, Eustace and Polly. So when you put two accounts in there, it only shows the ones that are, are related to both accounts simultaneously, or is it an or? Um, no, it's, it's or, correct. So I'm seeing emails they've sent to each other, as well as every email from, Eust from each account or to each account. So, um, we've got a little bit of an issue here. Um, I see something here called I hate you. That's not a good sign. Um, and so at this point, if you find data that you think is relevant, or maybe that's not your job, you're just supposed to search and let someone else do that, that's where you use the save query or export results. Saving the query is just going to save your search parameters. It doesn't actually save the data itself. Um, exporting it would deliver all of these messages as a zipped um, in a zipped format. Uh, for messages, it's in the um, mbox mailbox format as an external source. You would have to then import that using like Thunderbird or Outlook or something. It would reconstitute those messages, and you could actually read them if you wanted to. So uh, this is the email search. Let me uh, do another one. Let's do a drive. And do that search again. So, you know, here are all of the documents within those two accounts. Um, now, uh, you know, again, perfect example. Supposedly, um, uh, users are sending threatening messages. So I'm going to put in this term hate into the search parameters and do that same search again. I'll find this uh, conveniently created in place document, which I can get a preview of, and it says that in the text. So it's actually searching the full text of the documents within Drive and pulling that data out, not the title of the document. Now, if Eustace goes in and deletes this document, again, Vault will not have a record of it because it does not uh, do e-discovery for docs at this time. Again, if I want to export, so I find this, I can save the query or export. Um, for uh, uh, documents, anything in Drive, it will export it into the corresponding um, office uh, file type. So documents would be a, a .docx file. Um, does that for all of them. Um, uh, drawings go into PDFs. And then any non-Drive file just retains whatever format that it's currently in. Um, I can click export and say Eustace. And again, this can also take a very long time. This is, uh, you can, you don't have to stay on this page. It'll just run in the background and email you when this is done. But potentially, this could take hours, depending on how much stuff you're pulling out of the Drive account. And um, is a, there's a limit. It's like 100 megs per zip file. So you could get several zip files, and you just deliver those to whomever is responsible for going through that information.
Um, so that's kind of vault in real life, um, how uh, you might uh, walk through an, a situation, an incident, and, uh, and resolve that. Um, I suppose you could go trolling for information if you wanted to using the vault search. Just do a whole domain search in docs and search for, you know, get your dirty word list out and throw it in there. Um, I, you should probably have a plan for what you're going to do <laughs> once you find all that stuff. Sometimes uh, it's better not to know, uh, but you have the capability of doing that if you want to. Yes, sir? Got it. S um, not within Vault. So Vault is really um, more of a time machine, you know, taking you back to things that may not be there or are older. Um, what you want to do, and this gets outside of Vault but is pretty cool, is uh, you want to go into the, the dashboard. And um, it was announced about a week ago, 10 days ago, that uh, Google continues to improve their reporting capabilities within the, the admins console. So if I go into reports, um, I can go into I don't think it's there yet. I can actually perform searches within Drive for my domain, but the new feature that was just announced is they're going they're updating the alert option, which will now allow you to monitor words, a word list or a keyword list throughout your entire domain. That's not a vault feature, that's just an admin console feature. And so you can put your dirty word list in there and anytime a kid puts it in a document, potentially someone would get an email. Um, so th uh, that is possible. Uh, they didn't give a timetable. That one is linked to the trusted domain feature that you may have heard about. So those two I think will roll out together, they said in the next few months, um, certainly by next school year. So we just kind of went through, um, you know, cyberbullying incident. Um, uh, that's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, the different, some different scenarios that you might come across. Um, if you get to a, a FOIA request, so you know, here's potentially, you know, a student um, is denied special ed services. The family sues the district. FOIA request from lawyers, whatnot. They want um, all documents related to that student from special ed department, administration, teachers, everything. They're building a case that says the school has wrongfully denied their student access to special ed services. So in this situation, you're not being asked to provide information on a specific person. It's a lot of people. And so you're probably um, going to want to issue a hold for your entire domain. Uh, first, you create your matter. Um, and then I would uh, create a, uh, um, uh, a hold for everything. Special ed, you've got, you know, 15, 20, 30 different accounts, probably just create a domain hold for everything and then perform your search um, and deliver documents, emails, uh, whatever is requested um, as needed. Um, oh, I should uh, show you, um, this could be helpful as well. So in the uh, incident with Eustis, I've created my search parameters, you know, found this information. I want to share that with the administrator. I have this button up at the top of the screen here called Share. And it, it's kind of like a Google document, but I can actually share this specific search within the matter to a, an individual. So if there's you know, a specific AP who's responsible for investigating this, I do the search and say, hey, here's the stuff, take a look, and they can have access to just this you know, situation where they're not actually going in and, and fiddling with the data, they're just looking at what's there. You can share a matter, you can share a search, you can share a hold, pretty much all the various levels within Vault can be shared with an individual. This gets back to those um, permissions within your, your app's dashboard and also if Vault is turned on for specific OUs. If my assistant principal isn't in the OU with Vault turned on and I share this with him, he's going to get a link to ediscovery.google.com slash whatever. He clicks on it, it's not going to work because his account does not have Vault enabled for it. So 
you would either need to have him in an OU with it, or you'd have to move him into one temporarily so that he would access Vault um, while he's investigating. But um, that's how you could do this live search rather than um, you know, exporting the data. Um, would be difficult for an accessible principal. He's going to get a zip file with a bunch of MBOX files. What are they going to do with that? You can actually look at the information here within Vault. If it's an external individual, like I would not be sharing this with lawyers from other you know, parents or something. That's when you give them the zip file and say, hey, do what you got to do. Here's the stuff. Um, but for internal matters, you can use the sharing feature. Real quick, so yeah. that actually shares just the results? Or the actual search criteria is editable to those people? So I am sharing this screen That's right screen. here. Okay. Um, I, I haven't actually tried it. I don't know. I think it would just sh share the search criteria. I don't know that they would be able to edit the criteria. It probably would go back to the role that you have set for Vault, whether they'd just be able to view or edit search parameters. Okay. Um, so again, you, you have a lot of control, well, a lot of control. Let's see. You know, for me, I was a former principal. I don't want to mess with this. I just want to say, here's what I need. You say, here's what I found. I just look at it and say, just, I just look at it. I don't want to deal with the details. I want you to deliver a report to me. That's why I envisioned them just being the results. Correct. And for that, I would probably, so we'll do the search. Here is the report with the information, and now I share that. Oh, okay. So that's just saying, based on this search, here's the data that was collected. So then they say, okay, well, we didn't get much, so okay, try searching for this. And then you might have to do it again. So whenever you see the share button, you're just sharing that much information with them. So just to clarify, yep. the search of mail versus drive. So mail, the end user could have deleted the mail Correct. and still searching. In the case of drive, what's it actually searching there? Is it only searching? Whatsever in the drive account. Yeah, you've got a little bit of a grace period, depending on how, mu how savvy they are. So certainly you delete something, goes into trash for 30 days. Now, not everybody knows this, but there's actually a trash for the trash. Once someone removes something from their trash, there's actually a system trash that I'd have to look, but it stays there for another 30 or 60 days. Um, I'd have to confirm that Vault will actually still pull it from the system trash, but potentially you could have up to 60 days post-deletion to discover it um, if an incident comes up. Did the mail, does it show if it's in there in the end user's trash versus... That's a good question. Uh, it does, yes. So I was testing this, so I actually created a, a matter previously. Uh, so this one I created a while ago. If I open that up. Let's see, where did I do it? Uh, search. Okay, here we go. So if I open, so I actually you now drill down to at the actual content of the email. So this is what Eustace sent to Polly. Very sophisticated cyberbullying over here. Um, it shows, so I go into details, the labels. So it shows that the student, uh, it was sent. So there's um, Vault, they just recently added the ability to search drafts. But there is a, a checkbox to exclude drafts. I don't know what you do if someone wrote the email that said I hate you but didn't actually send the email. I don't know where that falls into bullying. But you can confirm it was sent, they put it in trash, and then I actually went through and actually deleted my trash. I emptied it. I'm super smart, you know, third grader. And it indicates that it was deleted. But Vault caught it. And you've got all your, you know, your details there. Thank you. That's a very, very important question. Um, but just again, if you've got a seven-year retention on, you know, 10th of April 2021, this message would, will be purged from the system, unless you, that's why you put the hold on. Um, that's a, you know, a, a, an overview of Vault. Um, 
Um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty simple tool. It's um, going to grow. It's going to develop over time. So um, look for future updates, especially related to Drive and e-discovery there. Um, knowing how to use the tools is the first step. Um, my concern as a former administrator is not so much how do I use the tool, but now I have access to information. How am I going to respond to this information now that I can easily find it and discover it? Cyberbullying is a very serious matter. Right now, most schools are operating under a, um, if I don't know about it, I don't deal with it, rather than actually actively investigating to see if it's happening. They're waiting for matters to come to their attention. You have tools at your disposal now that can allow you to look for things that haven't been brought to your attention. Um, what are you going to do with that? Can you do that effectively? And how are you going to address uh, those issues? So thanks for your time. I'll stick around if there are questions. Um, but uh, uh, I appreciate you being here. And hopefully Vault will, will serve you well. Yes, ma'am. Um, you mentioned chat. Yes. Chat, right. There, yep. Um, to be completely honest with you. So, um, if there was a, a, you know, a case where I needed to look at the chat, what I did was say, Yeah, so there's no sp uh, specific search parameter for only search chat. Okay. It's going to, it goes under email. So it would, so it would yeah, and I don't think I have any chat in, my, in that student account, so I wouldn't be able to pull it up. Um, so I was looking at this earlier today. So, what it does is um, it kind of does it like an email. It'll, it'll look like an email. Every back and forth is a thread. It groups all back and forth chats into a conversation up to 1,000 lines. Or if a three hour period of time elapses before someone responds, it'll separate that out. So if we go back and forth for an hour, all that will be together and then another one. But it'll just show up in the email search alongside the messages. Um, yes, let me look, let me pull it up. This was, um, uh, so this is, I believe, how Google decided to handle it. They are giving you the ability to turn off, off the record. So basically, you just have to understand that if you are enabling off the record, that is outside of Vault. If that is a problem for you, then turn off that capability, and everything will be in Vault. Um, you can do that by OU, so turn it off for students, on for staff, you know, whatever whatever your choice is. Um, definitely look through. So on my, um, actually, this page right here, these are the two that you want to take a look at. This is brand new as of like yesterday. So I'm not an expert in it yet. Um, this is the blog post where it says that Hangouts are now supported. And then this is the help overview of how it actually works and what is and isn't covered and all of that. Let me see if there's anything quick in there. Um, yeah. Um, so video calls, obviously, there's no support for video. It's just text. And uh, another thing, it, it's not Hangouts, but um, Docs chat doesn't count either. Um, so any chat that happens there is uh, is outside of Vault. Um, you need to not tell people what is and isn't covered in by archiving. <laughs> um, I mean, now that I know this, I mean, I can actually. I, I'm like, I'm such a sick person. I'm like planning the perfect cyberbullying incident because you know exactly what tools you would use. It's like, well, I'm never going to send an email. Um, I can do a document as long as I remember to delete it. And but really, Google Docs chat is is the invisible way. It's the perfect crime. Because it's never archived. Once you close a document, it disappears. It's not in, in archive. So that might be something you, you want to minimize in your district the use of. Because um, it's going to fall outside of everything. Good. Thank you. Other thoughts, questions? Is the, the presentation, I see the site, but it's saying new information. Oh, did I share it? Yeah, let me do that. Uh, I'll do it right now. Um, nothing overly fancy here. I'll share that with you. And uh, like I said, I'll email that out tonight so you'll have this, uh, the site, the presentation. Um, I'm actually recording this right now. So uh, I'll send you the video if you really want to watch it again. You can uh, watch it again. 
and, uh, and enjoy it. But thank you so much. I understand there are brownies in the uh, auditorium. If you go fast prior to the demo slam, you might be able to get one. Thanks a lot. We'll see you tomorrow.